good morning guys so here we are on a slightly murky uh, Saturday morning just outside Bellstone on the north edge of Dartmoor and today I'm gonna be doing the Dartmoor north to south I've watched a few channels do this and it's something I've wanted to do for a few months now and I figured that seeing as the days are getting shorter it would make sense to do it whilst we've still got you know a reasonable amount of daylight left so i left bellstone car park at 8 30 and it's currently 8 43. let me just swap you around so we came from down there off in the distance you can just see bellstone and we're heading down this track towards steeperton tour which oh, where's my finger which is that one there we're not going up steeperton tour <clears throat> we're going down the side of it uh, but yeah I'm, I was talking to my friend Rob about this one and he's very much into his ultralight hiking and backpacking that kind of stuff and he said well why don't you try doing an ultralight and seeing how fast you can do it because originally I was just gonna you know hike it and camp halfway and I like a challenge so I thought why not so I don't know how well you can see but I've got a different bag on today it's a little 20 litre Osprey uh, dry sack bag and I won't go into massive detail about what's in my kit at the minute I'll probably do another video on that but just it's five kilos with water so it's pretty light and uh, yeah hopefully that's gonna contain everything I need for this camp so for the time being I'm heading along this track as I mentioned heading to the base of Steeperton Tour and uh, that'll probably be where I check in with you next Hello, so we made it to the first sort of waypoint, checkpoint, uh, the base of Steeperton Tor. Here at the little river crossing. So I'm stopping here briefly to have a cup of coffee, get some caffeine going and to stock up on water because I hadn't got any water yet. I just did the first 6k without any because I knew that we got this nice little, little stream here, easy access to water. So got my captain filled up can have my coffee probably just drink a bit of water as well just get myself hydrated and then head off uh, I, I haven't brought the GoPro or anything with me today I'm filming all of this on my phone so I apologize if it's not up to my usual mediocre standards of filming uh, just trying to keep everything as light as I can and get rid of the bulk so no GoPro today uh, I got here pretty much bang on an hour it was 9 35 when I got here the next kind of stop waypoint is um, Hanging Stone Hill that's where we're heading to next and uh, it looks like it's reasonably good track along to there so maybe make up some time who knows but I'll catch up with you guys at the next stop here we are at Hanging Stone Hill uh, I've ducked as I mentioned, I'm just filming this on my phone, so I haven't got a microphone or anything, so I'm trying to get out of the wind. It's not too windy, but enough to, I'm sure, cause some wind noise. Uh, got here, yeah, kind of crept up on me a little bit. I thought it was a bit further away, but here we are. And like, this is the first time I've been back here since my very first hike and wild camp on Dartmoor. Seems like a very long time ago, but it wasn't. It was in May, so only a few months. Um, yeah, a little bit puffed out. It's a bit of a climb, but yeah, lovely views up here. Let me flip you around. Look at this. Very moody, moody sky today. It's nice though, because it's cool. Nice weather to walk in. Next, next stop is Sitterford Tor. Uh, I forgot to note down the distances so I'm not quite sure how far away that is. I think it's about 10k. Uh, not 100% sure. But that's where we're going next. I'm just going to stop here briefly, have a quick drink and then we'll be off. So we're now at Quinton's Man observation point. Um, like a military, a couple of military sheds or something here. Uh, I haven't looked at the time yet, I'm not quite sure what time it is. I'm going to look at the time when I get to Postbridge. Um, I've, I don't know, I think it's somewhere between half ten and eleven, it feels like, at the minute, I'm not sure. Uh, Postbridge is still a little way off, so I'm going to push on. 
made it to Sidford Tor. That was a pretty, that hill was steeper than I thought it was. Can't really see the valley from here, but you can kind of see the, the trail in the middle of the camera, on the, you know, the far hill that we came down and then into that valley and then up again. Oh, what a slog. I'm gonna have a quick drink and then crack on. Get to Post Bridge and check how I'm doing for time. I'm at Grey Weather's Stone Circle now. Here it is. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Mad this stuff, isn't it? Makes you wonder, you know, people's motivations all those years ago to do stuff like this and what it was for. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyway, we need to go that way towards Postbridge, which is getting closer. So, made it to Postbridge and I've stopped in the pub. Not for a, I was considering having a pint, but given the nature of what I'm doing, I thought well, that might be a bit foolhardy. So I'm having a pint of Coke instead and some crisps. Part reason for coming to the pub was I realised that I left my my spoon <laughs> at home. So I was like, oh crikey, I'm gonna have to use 10 pegs to eat my food tonight. So I went in, got a couple of bits and I managed to source some um, wooden, like disposable, a disposable fork. So that's handy. So I won't be eating at like 10 peg tonight. Uh, so time-wise, I got here at quarter past 12. So that's three and a half hours from Oak Hampton. Pretty good time, I think, so far. But yeah, I'll be carrying on in a bit once I finish my coke. See you in a bit. Hi guys, thought I'd just check in. Uh, I'm not quite sure what these are actually called. I'll try and remember to put it on the screen, but I'm at some stepping... Yeah, as you can see, going over this river, which is pretty sweet. Starting to feel it now. Yeah legs are hurting. Um, got the poles out because my knees are getting a bit bashed up from all the all the kind of downhill but keep going. Uh, I'll check in with you uh, perhaps up at either Coombstone Tor or Riders Hill. We're at the top of Rider Hill now it's 20 to 4 and yeah I'm, I am really feeling it now. It's just very variable terrain you know. No blisters, I don't think. But yeah, achy knees, achy ankles. I think that off in the distance, that volcano looking thing is uh, Red Lake. That's somewhere I wanted to go. Uh, but at the minute, I'm just having a coffee. Just a little pit stop, 10, 15 minutes, just give my, get, have a little rest. And then, yeah, we're gonna crack on. I mean, so it's 20 to 4, I'm probably gonna stay here till about 4 o'clock. Press on. So, in theory, we've got another 4 hours. Then my pace is slowing. <laughs> but we'll see what we can do, see how far we can get. I'll check in with you guys later on. Alright, so we're at Papa's Hill now. Uh, it's not raining, I just put my raincoat on because. It's a bit windy and I was starting to get a bit chilly, so I just put this on to keep the wind off. Um, <laughs> I was, had a, when I was sat up at Rider Hill, I was feeling a bit demoralised if I'm honest with my legs. I mean, they're a bit better now that I've been on some softer ground, but oh, hang on, I need to get out of the wind. Yeah, a bit of softer ground, so they are feeling a bit better. I took some ibuprofen as well, but I was talking to my wife and I said, if I can make it to Ivy Bridge today, can I stay in a B&B? <laughs> um, we had a look and the cheapest one was just over 90 quid. It seems a bit, a bit excessive. It's, I think it's just because I'm so tired and in a bit of pain. It's just the, um, I'm feeling a bit disenamored about bivying tonight. If I had a tent, it wouldn't be so bad because I could get the tent set up and just kind of cozy up in there. But I don't, and that's the thing, I don't mind Tarf and Bivy. It's, I think it's just because it's been a beast of a hike. Um, but never mind. I'm just going to start looking now on the map 
for potential places where I could stop for the night. I'm thinking maybe Red Lake, that's a few kilometers away. Um, that might be a, that might be somewhere to stop. I mean, it's a tarpon bivvy, so I can drop it pretty much anywhere. Uh, but I don't want to set up too early because again, it's not a tent, so it's a bit open. But so I'm, I'm still aiming to, s I'm going to set up as late as possible. Anyway, onwards, let's keep going. Just stopped for a, another little, uh, little break, fill up on some water at another lovely little bridge. There's quite a few of these around. I just, they're absolutely lovely. Look at that. Beauty. Uh, so I'm nearly at Red Lake. It's over there somewhere. I've got to go up that hill, which sucks. My second wind that I had has faded a little bit. Uh, but got a couple of hours. It's just before six o'clock at the minute. And I've slowed down massively. I really have slowed down, but I think it's because I part for a little while I was thinking get to Ivy Bridge. But now I know that I'm not going to Ivy Bridge and I'm bivvying. I'm slowing down a bit because I don't need to don't need to get there. Uh, one thing I just wanted to quickly mention, my this jacket, this is a Rab Spark jacket. I've been wearing it for an hour or two now and I don't feel sweaty at all. It's awesome and it's really, really breathable. It just kind of struck me as I was stood here thinking I feel really comfortable. Normally I don't like putting waterproofs on unless it's raining because you get all clammy and, and nasty but I feel dry as a bone which is great. Anyway, catch you in a bit. Look at that, lovely, beautiful, well, beautiful sunset of sorts, sunset behind the hill. I forgot how quickly the light drops once the sun has gone. It seemed quite bright on the camera for some reason, must be it compensating or something because it's very gloomy at the minute, but that's good. It's good that it's a bit brighter because that means you can see. Uh, just show you my little campsite. It's a little bit disorganised at the moment. We'll tidy it up in a moment. So here's the got my Hunker XL bivvy with my Xped ULM sleeping mat, Thermarest quilt. I didn't bring the pillow today. Ultralight and all that. I'm going to use the um, pump sack for for the. Uh, Sleeping mat, I stuff my down jacket in it later on when I go to bed. Um, but yeah, that's it. I got a smaller tarp, so not the 3x3 DD tarp. This is just a Amazon job. Nice and light. It's uh, 1.2x2, I think. But again, it's just as a bit of a safety net in case it does rain. It doesn't look like it's going to, though. But that's pretty much it from me for tonight. My plan now is I'm going to get some warm clothes on and get some food cooking and pretty much then chill out in bed and probably fall asleep quite quickly because I'm absolutely shattered. So unless anything exciting happens, I'll catch up with you in the morning. Morning. It's about half past six. I've been up for about 15 minutes. I had an alright night last night. I, I fell asleep really quick. I got myself all cocooned up and I, th and I thought I'll listen to my book for a while. And yeah, that lasted about five minutes. <laughs> I was asleep. It was not my best bivvy camp. I'm not quite sure why. I, I fell asleep quickly, but I just woke up loads. Sort of on the hour, every hour. I was waking up, kind of. Um, so didn't get as much sleep as I'd have liked, but could have been worse. My legs are a bit sore. Well, stiff. Stiff and a bit sore this morning, but I'm thinking once I, uh, once I start walking, they should loosen up a little bit. And I haven't got too far to go. My wife's picking me up at half past nine, so i got plenty of time to wander down into Ivy Bridge and... Uh, yeah, I should be there in plenty of time. But I'm just having a coffee. And I was going to have some breakfast, but 
again, I don't know why, like with my with my food last night, I really didn't feel like eating it. It was a real effort to to get it down. And considering that all I'd eaten all day was a hash a McDonald's hash brown, two Mars bars, and a packet of crisps. That seemed a bit balmy because I felt hungry, but when it came to it, yeah, it was a I don't know, I'm not sure why. I don't know whether it's just I am really starting to go off of the dehydrated meals and I I don't know but I don't feel hungry I'm all right uh, I'll get something to eat on the way home or at home but yeah I'm just gonna finish my coffee and get packed up and then the last leg to Ivy Bridge can get that started so here it is I've made it to Ivy Bridge just on the just on the edge now and it's just gone half past eight which is pretty cool because it means I did the north to south in pretty much 24 hours but I'm shattered <laughs> that tramway from kind of just before Red Lake down to almost all the way to Ivy Bridge was you know it was good because it was a good solid track to follow but it was really hard on the legs so my um knees and feet are feeling a bit tender i don't think i've got any blisters though which is pretty cool given the distance but that marks the end of my ultralight dartmoor north to south adventure pretty chuffed with how i've done and uh but I don't think I'll be doing it any, again anytime soon, at least until my legs have recovered. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you've got any questions or feedback at all, leave me a comment. Love to hear from you. And as always, see you in the next video. Take it easy, guys.